sorry. We are, you guys, you guys are getting like slammed with videos. It's craziness. All a bunch we haven't reacted to. This is your week. This is your week. Uh, we are about to react to a band called Clutch. I've never heard of them. Have you? Nope. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, I came into this thing like a month ago feeling like I had a basic understanding of metal. Yeah, I thought you did too. I'm surprised. That I don't know a didn't. damn thing. Listen, just as a reminder, I grew up in a Christian home and we didn't really do the music thing. So well, I, I grew like, up in a Christian basically home. Basically knew it. Nothing. I grew up in a Christian home too, but your, your experience is Was quite unique. Particularly. <laughs> They put they put a bubble inside of the bubble. <laughs> and wrapped us in bubble tape. To protect you from the bubble. Golly! <laughs> Didn't I ask you that one time at the Bible? No, no, no I'm not going to do that. All right. Um, okay, so this is Clutch. This isn't... Uh, blah, what's the name of the song? Ghost. Ghost, yeah. Ghost. Eulogy of a ghost or something like that. You I, can, I, I saw all these ghost things on our Facebook. I'm like... <clears throat> People are asking for ghosts. Eulogy the band. for a ghost. Yeah, yeah, that's what was confusing. I thought people were asking for ghosts. The band. I'm like, this is the week we're not supposed to do any repeats. But it's not <laughs> Ghost the band. It's, no, it's the song Ghost from the band Clutch. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's the short version. I, the long version of it is Eulogy for a Ghost. I sure. I sure. Okay. All right. Hit it. Yeah. This is. For this guy's channel? Or is this the beginning of the song? Actually? Oh. You're right. So it should be here? I can cut this out. No, I'll just leave it.
swings open, floor pours creak. Now who just that noble host who has this moment given up the ghost? Song. Yeah, but right at that part, no reprieve, they should have gotten really hard. <laughs> oh, it was so good, minus the fact that it was not hard heavy enough. I, I've never I've never heard you say you wanted a song to get heavier. Yeah, but th this one I felt, first of all, well, let's talk about it. <clears throat> so the, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The Sa vocal surprised me. Oh, me too. <laughs> That's the first time we've heard vocals like this. They were different. Well, on it's our like show, a I've never strong. I don't want to say country, but that's yes, like the that's what I thought. But but it I'm kind of fit along with it hands because he's yeah. Straw out of his mouth. But it wasn't country, Alica. Nope. nope. It was like a guy from the country, and they're playing at a bar. He's gonna eh, have yep. a straw in his mouth, but it worked. And it you wasn't, can't see his full face. But it was still still rock and roll. Yeah. But it, it's they've got a very unique sound. These guys. Yep. I like it. It's almost like uh, what's that guy in the black, the black shirt, the black hat? I forgot what the guy's name was. <clears throat> anyway, I'm sure, there's lots of people that fit that uh, description. Yeah. All right, what do you got? So it sounds like that there's this guy Lazarus, and he died, and that his wife is left. She's upset. She's uh, she's praying. She's um, dealing with his death. The debt collector comes. It sounds like. I don't think she wanted to marry him, but that she was kind of forced into it because she had debts that she knew she couldn't pay. Where do you get that? What do you, which part? What what part are you saying? Where do you she get? didn't want to marry him though. Because, well, I I because she's mad. Yeah, it she's stabbing madly at the roast. Yeah, her husband's dead. Right. So you think the day her husband died, she wanted to marry somebody else? The guy's already got her in bed oh, naked. Oh, 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 oh. And then I Lazarus thought, comes uh, back yeah, from the dead. Yeah, yeah. He walks in. His wife is in the bed, already married to the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like this got no, pushed the second, on her. No, the second guy. Yeah, oh, this okay. Is two people? No, 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 no. What are you talking I, about? I, I thought you were saying she didn't want to marry the dead guy in no, 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 no. She didn't want ah. to marry the, the, the tax collector. I didn't know that the tax collector was, uh, but that they were married. It says that he comes in and she's naked in the bed, already wed. Okay, you're right. So good catch, good catch. So sir. then here comes Laura, uh, Loris. Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus, um, still dripping with the waters of Sheol, babbling about body and soul. I mean, he's had this crazy experience. He walks in, and yo, there she is. But he had debts, and she didn't know what else she was gonna do. You know, that kind of thing happened back in the day. Uh, what well, happens you know? today, I'm sure. I'm just sure. in just in different ways. Yes, and I really liked the rib of Adam, the eyes of Eve. I don't know what it means in this song, but it meant something probably completely different for me. But what do you what do you get out of it? Well, the rib of Adam is because when Eve was created, it says that God took a rib out of Adam and then created say that. Eve. What? <laughs> well, what does it say? Explain it. It says from his side. From his side. Well, oh, really? And we always say yeah, rib? Yeah, it doesn't say rib. It's, the Hebrew word actually means side. Well, what does it mean? What did he take <coughs> from his side? He just take a, took a piece of a it. A big chunk of his skin? Yeah. What you, no, yeah. Come on. It doesn't say... I'm just telling you the Hebrew doesn't say okay. rib. Okay, well, that's that's fine. But he does that make sense that he would have taken a chunk of the man's skin? And yeah, what does he actually, have there? A big scar? It actually does because... Jesus had a big scar on his side when he was getting his bride. Yeah, but if he would have cut that it and sewed it, it could sense. still be a scar. It doesn't have to be a big gaping nasty. You're not okay, arguing I'm with sorry. me. You're arguing with Allah. I'm okay, telling all right, you that the right, right. Hebrew word doesn't say okay, rib. Okay, it doesn't say rib. But in popular parlance, people yeah, think it's rib. I'm like, just 
This Jonah is just, with the fish This and the is whale. just me being a, a Bible nerd. No, that's okay. Accuracy is good. Um, but now I don't even remember where I was going. The okay. rib of Adam. The rib of Adam. So we know where they're getting that from. Right. So she's created from him. But the eyes of Eve. And, like, I feel like when I hear the eyes of Eve, like, after Eve, like, disobeyed God and then they got sent out of the garden before they got sent out we've talked about this before God promised that from her like birthing children was gonna come one that was gonna crush the head of the snake so when it says the eyes of Eve I feel like like Eve had her eyes set after that I'm sure every time she birthed a child is this the one is this the one is this the one I'm sure that that's not what they're talking about in this song I'm just saying what it meant to me <laughs> yeah but the first time we hear about Eve's eyes they're not good what do you mean? What part? What part? Because when it says, you know, the forbidden fruit. Yeah. It said oh, when she, she saw desire, yeah. that it was pleasing to the eye. Okay. Right. Well, I was just saying what it meant to me. The eye. Oh yeah, I, but I, but I, I don't yeah. know what it means in the song. I don't song. think that this guy's theology is that developed, you Grace. No, I'm sure it's not. I just said it was what I think that it. <laughs> I'm not the is, enemy. This is another random item. Yeah, I know. What is it? What you and this, these are the, these are all the things that we go to stores and buy for you. People. I know. And then you know what? My son said, why? How come every time we go to the store, we go back again? I'm like, that's because we don't know what we're doing. So every time we go, we're like, this is the last time. I'll tell sure you what, enough, ig it's not. ignorance is very expensive. Yeah, it's not bliss. Yeah, no. I, 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 okay, I, so what do you think? I think it's beautiful. It? I think it's beautiful what you're talking about. I'm just saying that, you know. No, I totally don't think that's what he's saying in the song. I just don't know what he's saying. That's how you want to interpret it. That's what I put into it. That's art. Yes, I know. That's what you're supposed to do. Yes. Yeah, but I don't beautiful. know what he means in the song, why that... We don't know what any of these people mean in this. No, what do you get out of it? Like that's one of the things that's hilarious to me. It's like I'm giving my interpretation of what the song is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm not. My analysis is not like the end of it, and neither is yours. Right. Um. It just. It's just our interpretations. So the rib of Adam. God took from Adam's rib to to create Eve. Oh, he didn't take a rib. So make sure you're clear about that. And then the eyes of Eve. These are all things, in my mind, these are all things that are blessings that became curses, basically. Because... Oh, my gosh. Because when... So God took the rib out of Adam to create Eve, and then Eve was the one that helped Adam into disobeying God. And then when God confronts them, Adam, like the good man that he is, blames her. Right. Right? Right. Um, so Eve's rib basically contributed to his fall. Right. Right? And then Eve's... No, Adam's rib contributed to his fall, and yeah. Eve's eyes contributed to her fall. Which contributed to his. Which then contributed to Cain receiving his sinful nature, which now the sons of Cain... What does reprieve no mean? Rest. A oh, break. Oh, boy. Because Cain is a wanderer. Yep. So he's never... He, he, the sons and of Cain never have a rest. it was Cain that God said to him that sin is crouching at the door, and he like, basically wants to, to overtake you. you, and you have to rule it. You must master So it. he's going to get no rest. Because you know how we feel when, like... There's always something bad to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because you, I, I'm like trying to go through my Rolodex. You hear Ben Adam, sons of Adam a lot. Mm -hmm. You hear Benai Elohim, sons of God a lot in the, in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And I don't think you hear sons of Cain a lot. Maybe Genesis 5. I'm not sure. I don't have a Bible in front of me. I thought it does say the sons of Cain somewhere. No, it says the sons of God looked at the daughters of men. But it doesn't say sons of Cain. You never. I. I. I it, but anyway, it's just an interesting. It's an interesting take because, you know, instead of identifying yourself with Adam, he's you're, he's identifying humanity with the sons of Cain, mm -hmm. which is interesting, um, because at least with the sons of Adam, you get some sort of idea of redemption. But sons of Cain, like, there's no redemption. It says no reprieve. Yeah, but maybe it's because he's saying, well, Adam, he took part in it. Eve took part in it, and poor Cain is having to bear the consequence. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people feel like, yeah. well, it, you know, they're the ones that screwed it up for the rest of us. Well, maybe he's not talking about, I mean, I don't know. It seems like he's talking about all humanity there. You got Adam, Eve, and Cain. It's just a very interesting triplet, those three. Yeah, but how do you think that this fits in with the storyline? Well, I think it's a, it's a commentary on human nature and the human experience mm -hmm. that we're all, you know, we're all in sin. And our sin, you know, everybody's basic tr sin drives them. So, like, for example, the debtor, you know, he, he's he got this girl over a barrel, and now he can, he can do whatever he wants with her. Um, but I, I just want to get more into the, into the lyrics, because this writing is very interesting. Okay. So it's a funeral, right? Mm-hmm. 
Um, leather soles go shuffling in, stinking of smoke and ten cent gin. Yeah, I didn't picture a funeral actually. You remember how they used really? to put the, the coffin was basically the, the dead body was inside the house? That doesn't make any sense because then they would have he would have just sat up from there. Did he come walking in? Who? Lazarus. That happens after the funeral. Kind words are offered, silent prayers. She satisfied the most while stabbing madly at the roast. Yeah. She's busying herself, you know, doing something. Well, not only is her husband dead, but the, the, already the debt collectors are on their way. They repossess his silver eyes. I love what that does line. That mean? I love that I line. I pictured like his silver teeth with a silver eyeball, and they pulled it out of his head. Well, what were they actually saying? I, I, you could like hyper literalize this thing and say, you know, silver eyes where you, you know you put a silver dollar over a dead person or whatever. Oh yeah. And like even that they're taking. You're right. I bet that's what it is. You know? Yeah. But there's a lot of like subliminal biblical in imagery here that, that's unbelievable. Now, there is a sense in which um, I thought initially that this guy like metaphorically was talking about God. The creditor rides with his men. The death of debtors he won't forgive. Yeah, I thought, yeah. You know what I mean? And but I don't think so. They, respond, they rep repossess his silver eyes. Now in the potter's field he lies. Yeah. The potter's field, uh, many of you may not know, but... So Judas betrays Jesus. He gets his 30 pieces of... Silver. And they repossessed his... Silver. Eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, which is interesting, the eyes of Eve. Yep. You know what probably his silver eyes are? It's his eyes that were like always going after money. That's how he got in all that debt. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like a, it's an interesting double entendre. Like mm. he had silver eyes. Like he was always after silver. And that's how you get in trouble with debt collectors, right? You always mm -hmm. want to go after silver. But anyway, so Judas sells out Jesus for what's well, interesting. The guy isn't named Judas, so he's named Lazarus. This is such brilliant writing. Yeah. Such brilliant. You, I'm just blown away by how well these people know their Bibles, man. <laughs> Let me get to Potter's Field. Okay, let's go. Uh, so Judas sells out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, okay? Because Judas was a thief. You know, look at John 6... John 10, he was a thief, okay? Um, and G Judas sells out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Judas has a change of heart. He sees that Jesus is um, Didn't wrongly Didn't he say, I accused. betrayed innocent I blood? I betrayed innocent blood, right? Yeah. So then the, the bad guys go, what's that to us? So he takes the money and he chucks it at their feet. Mm -hmm. says, I don't want to be part of this money. And... This is, you know, and and the bad guys go, okay, whatever, do your thing, buddy. That's your, that's between you and Allah. So then Judas goes and hangs himself. Mm -hmm. He kills himself. Well, the bad guys look at the money and they go, well, we can't spend this money because it's blood money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they buy. They're the ones that passed out the money for blood. <laughs> right. So, but, but these are religious people, and that's that's what we do, right? So, all right, you gotta follow the rules. You can't spend blood money. We just have to kill innocent people. Okay. All right. So, so anyway, so now Judas is dead, right? Because mm -hmm. he hung him. He killed himself. Well, they don't want to spend. They can't spend the money on themselves. So what they do is they buy this field mm -hmm. where basically they could bury foreigners and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Well, the field in the in the Aramaic it was called Akaldama. Akaldama means field of blood, mm -hmm. but it was in a potter's field. Dun dun dun! <laughs> now, there's actually a prophecy in Zechariah. What does it mean, potter's field? It's a field. a potter's field, like the potter's field. Like it belonged to a just potter. Like, like I don't that. understand what potter means. Like, like that was his job. Like the <laughs> what? You're looking at me like this is a dumb well, question. Some, well, but I don't some know. of the pottery has to do with clay and things like that, right? So okay, it's like so it's where, where the, and, the potters would get the yeah, stuff you to make would, your clay, right? Right. It was okay. just this worthless. It, you okay. couldn't. You couldn't like have. You couldn't. Well, you grow, can't grow anything in that. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. grow. So it's it basically unless you were a potter, it meant nothing to you. And, and then you know when they were done, they would just sell it off at cheap prices, basically. Can you imagine burying somebody in that? Well, I mean, a bunch of clay. That it was just foreigners, so you they just didn't basically them, yeah. didn't care, right? So, mm. <clears throat> what was so so? It's interesting. Well, there's a prophecy I think in Zechariah chapter 12 that talked about the betrayal. This is written about 400 years before Christ. It talked about the betrayal of Judas and where Jesus is narrating 400 years before the fact and says, "This is a price that they paid for me." 
you know, 30 pieces yeah. of silver, and then Zachariah goes and, and buys a potter's field or whatever. Yeah. And then, like, the same events, like, reoccur. And that that's one of the things about the Bible is it just, the history just continually repeats itself mm -hmm. in different, but then the story develops and, anyway. You get more detail. That's for a podcast. Okay, so anyway, this guy gets buried in the potter's field. So, like, that's an right. illusion. That's an allusion to, like, Judas, basically, especially when it talks about the eyes of silver. Mm -hmm. They repossessed his silver eyes. That's a crazy line. You know, because it says to me that this guy was, like, not a very responsible guy, you know, with his money or whatever, and then he left his girl Which in would this... would explain why she was angry. Right. It, he left his girl in this pretty precarious situation. Mm -hmm. And I get the feeling it's like the 1800s, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're riding on horses. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. <clears throat> the sons of Cain waiting for a dead man's shoes have you heard the latest news you know like what do you get from late waiting for a dead man's shoes that's just I just think again that that movie that I saw the a Christmas Carol or whatever where uh -huh. um, Scrooge they were all waiting for him to die nobody cared about the man they just wanted him to die so they could steal and they like stole everything from around him like he was in his bed and they stole the curtains from around his bed the little ho hooks and everything like they're gonna take everything waiting for a dead man's shoes I just thought it meant that they just wanted even like, his shoes or snatch take, take the shoes off before you bury him maybe when you have the ceremony leave the shoes on but as soon as you go to bury him take uh, the shoes off so we can have them so they're waiting for them yeah that's that's the uh human nature huh like oh, oh it's oh, a funeral oh. We'll let the funeral go, and then after that, hey, he's got no need of him. But then again, it's like, well, I mean, he's dead. Yeah, I know, but there's got to be what a What do you need his shoes for? People just, when you see people, like, after somebody dies, sometimes it, that's what it is. It's just this grabbing for all the things that the person has, going through their closet. Getting, yeah, and sometimes, fighting over the will. Yeah, sometimes it's for sentimental reasons, and sometimes it's just for gain. And then I feel like that the, the value of the person was lost in the material things that they had accumulated over their life. But then, but it's like, everybody says that our life is worth more than our possessions and that being a materialistic person is bad. But then we pour all this meaning into materials. Mm -hmm. All well, his shoes, these were his shoes. Yeah, but they were his. And the only reason those shoes are valuable is because they're his. I see that. Because we're in a physical world. You yeah. can't deny that you can't get all... It's not know. any pair of shoes. I mean, if they were brand new shoes in a box that he never wore, that's different than the ones that he was actually wearing. If you died <coughs> and you people guys were can have my shoes. here pulling all your stuff and everything, I'd be so upset. And I wouldn't want them, don't touch anything. You I guys can have my shoes. No, you can't. If I die, you, you can can't. have my shoes. I'll fight you for them. Size 12. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give some of them away. I'll keep something. Shirts. Sure. Anyway. Uh, the creditor rides with his men. Yeah, well, I thought that, that the reason I thought that that was God was because, you know, how some people have this. Um, that God is like that. He's just this exacting. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm collecting I'm coming, everything. I'm collecting. Yeah. Even after you're dead, like, yeah. I'm going to, you know, you're uh -huh. going to, you know, raw. And, but, like, didn't you grow up with that kind of idea of God or no? Well. I'm not, I'm not saying not who's responsible, really. I'm just saying, did you have that concept of God? See, I want to say yes, but then i got to say no, too, at the same time, because okay. I felt like that I had this very, very special thing between me and God, okay. and I always felt that way, and I didn't feel like, that, I almost want to say that there was aspects of God that I felt were very forgiving, and he was just like, like, very, like, always pulling me into himself, but then I think that there was a part that I always felt like that, yeah, like... I can't screw up either, but I was always doing the right thing, so it made sense that he pulled me near to himself. You know what I'm saying? So because you were doing the right thing, you thought that he was he liked you because you were doing the right thing. I don't, I don't know if I thought in that order or if I just was like, oh, well, obviously he's pulling me close. I'm doing the right thing <clears throat> because when I would, when I started doing the wrong thing, I felt very far away from him, and I felt like that was him pushing me away, even though it was me making choices to turn myself away from God. I still was like, that's he, he's pushing me away. Yeah, that's Cain, right? Sons of Cain received yeah, no reprieve. Yeah, he probably sulked about it. Yeah, because it says Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. God didn't. God didn't push Cain away. Cain left himself. Right. Um, but they repossess his silver eyes. I was just thinking that that's like the angels of death. Because when you die, you lose your eyesight. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I thought that line right there. In the last month and a half or so, like that to me is that's is the line of the month. Probably the line of the month because wow. it's so you can go so many different places with it legitimately. 
Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes you interpret something, you're like, eh, that's a stretch, but there is a ton of things. The Judas angle with the potter's field, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff there. This guy is a gifted lyricist. So, I, and I always want, I always say this, like, almost every time, like, when I see somebody, like, that gifted, I always say to myself, like, I want to see another song, like, can they do this again? Uh-huh. Like, I've written stuff before, I'm like, damn, I'm on fire. <laughs> And then other times I'm like, what the wow, hell is what? this? Yeah. This is like completely forgettable literature. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> I can't tell you how many things I've just deleted. Um, but th this stuff is amazing, amazing writing. Okay. Lazarus is back from the dead, looking as one would expect. La dripping with the waters of Sheol. I have never heard of Sheol as being a water place. Why would they have said waters of Sheol? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of Old Testament in literature that says that the Sheol has waters in it and all that. Remember, really? I mean, even, even remember, the other, oh, my gosh, Lazarus. Well, yeah. Who, which Lazarus are you thinking about? Well, I was thinking about the one that Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus' friend, right? Yeah. Well, what if it was the Lazarus from the parable? The witch, well, what are you the, doing? Why are you doing this? The, what if it was the Lazarus from the parable, the rich man and Lazarus? But he didn't come back from the dead. Yeah, but he could have. <laughs> Just gave me. And, well, it would make more sense that it was the other Lazarus because this guy's poor. Yeah, but I get the I get from the story that he didn't even friggin' have any shoes or silver eyes to even take from him. Well, that's because the rich man took all this stuff. No, I disagree. That's not it. Because I don't even think he had a wife and all that. That Lazarus sounds like he's poor. He's begging at the man's thing, and the the dogs were licking him after he died. He didn't have anybody burying him. Yeah, that's too much of a stress. I com I completely disagree with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're probably right. Um, no, Sheol, Sheol is, um, even even in that parable, though, Lazarus has, you know, give me some, dip his hand in some water and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So the good, so Sheol is kind of like the underworld in the, in the new, in the New Testament world, right? The Jewish world, the New Testament. And well, and it's really a Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. So like in the King James, when you see hell in the Old Testament, like, was it Psalm uh, 42, the famous one? Where he says, even if I go down into hell, there you will find me. Mm -hmm. Right? That The word hell in, in that is not, it's Sheol. It's the underworld. It's the place of the dead. It's mm -hmm. where you go when you die. And, you know, and the grave or the pit. A lot of times you see the grave or the pit in the Old Testament is Sheol. Mm -hmm. So, it, during the Inner Testament of time, there's a lot of speculation about what's going on in Sheol. And then it got basically broken down, kind of like the Elysian fields or or, or Hades in, uh, I mean, uh, or the bad place in Tartarus, I think it is, in uh, Greek mythology, Greek mythology yeah. right? Where the good guys go to the Elysian fields mm -hmm. and they, you know, they drink the nectar of the gods and then the bad guys go to the bad place or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, the river, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, but then in, in uh, Sheol... You know, there it's a watery place too. There's some water there because it's a garden. The, the the good section is is full of gardens and all. Oh, that. okay. I got a couple Jewish friends. I got this guy that knows Hebrew really well. Hit me up. Make sure I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah. So there he is. He was hanging out in the good part of Sheol, and uh, and it, looking as one would expect. I thought that was a brilliant line. Why did what, what did you what did you? Uh... <laughs> well, he looked like he'd been buried in. He came back. That was scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, like a zombie. Can you imagine? Like la, 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 la. she's in bed with this guy, and then in walks her husband. Well, her old husband. I, I don't even know how to categorize that. And he's looking like, <laughs> like a freaking ghost. <laughs> she was already mad at him. Now what? I don't what think she was. Why are you saying like she was mad at him? I don't think she was mad at him. She was mad. She was mad she was that he mad, died. She was mad at the debt. Mad that he Well, left I don't her. even mad see she, it says that she was mad. Where she was she mad was when mad? she was stabbing madly at the roast. Yeah, she was stabbing madly, Are crazily, quickly? quickly. Yeah, but I feel like it was because she was upset. You do that, like when you're angry, like yes. you were angry at me like ten minutes ago, like you do you do your house. Yes, I do. Quick. So like that's what it that's that's a life hack, brothers. Not all of you. Know, if your girl your girl's like upset, you know, just get her mad, she'll start doing stuff really quickly. Like Pepe used to do that to my grandma. He's like, I used to uh, get your grandma mad, so she'd go through the house like a white tornado. I'm like, what? Yeah, you're my little white tornado. Stop it. <laughs> you can be my black windstorm. That's uh, so corny and racist. All right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there he is. He comes back from the dead. A Wahoo up boy. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go to my girl's place. And then there she, she is. She's going to be so happy. Yeah, yeah. Well. That is so awkward. What happens next? I, I don't remember. <sighs> it's got nobody. There's nobody left. She's with the... So, like, they took his shoes, they took his eyes, they took his silver. Now they took his girl. Allah, well, he's done. 
Halas. Jeez, um. Halas. Oh, and then he says, the rib of Adam, the eyes of Eve, the sons of Cain receive no it's just, reprieve. It's just an object lesson, this whole story. Yeah. But it's true, though, a lot of these guys, I mean, think about it. Like, if, if, you, if you could come back from the dead, life is going to go on without you. Yeah, but I mean, people would expect that it would take more than six hours. <laughs> yeah, but do you really think, like, if, if a ghost really could come back from Sheol, do you really think that they would have that concept of time anyway? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so he, you're saying he doesn't know that it was only he doesn't been know. six hours? He doesn't know it's only been, you know, 28 minutes or whatever it is, and I don't think he cares. Would you care? If I came back and you were in bed with somebody else? Of course I would care. What uh, the hell's wrong with no, you? No, what I'm saying is, would you care if it was six hours or six years? You'd be upset either way. I would be, but six years would make more sense. I'd say, well, what did I expect? I mean, he well, can't, uh, can't be single forever. Okay, I would tell you it was six years. I could be single forever. Uh, if this doesn't work, it's over. I'm done. I'll, I'll go into a hermitage or something like that. You would. I would. You know I would. I do know you would. You, <laughs> I would. Believe you me. Um... Yeah, yeah, now who will toast our noble host who has this morning given up the ghost? It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant line. Brilliant line. This guy's such a good writer. It's a rough day <clears throat> for Lazarus. Yeah, but it's a, it's a weird, you know, Lazarus is the one that Jesus resurrected from the dead, right? And it's like, uh, but it's interesting. Oh, man, there's so many things to Even say. Even that Lazarus that. that Jesus raised from the dead, he wasn't married. He had his sisters. So even How do you know he wasn't married? Just because the text doesn't mention something explicitly doesn't mean, oh, he, here was his social security number. It doesn't mean that you can't fill in the blanks. Uh, you know how many times I've filled in the blanks talking about the Bible? Yeah, it's true. It just seems like if he had a wife that he wouldn't have such a big thing going with his sisters, you know? Like when you kind Why? of get married, you kind of... It's not like when you're growing up. I mean, I don't spend all the time with my siblings anymore. I mean, I'm married. I'm doing my life. Anyway... He was he was risen from the dead. This guy. There is this movie. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it was about this kid who died, but then he came back to life, and he's like, "Hey, mom, back!" But he was a zombie, and he was just terrible. And basically, his mom was like, basically by the end of the movie, his mom was like, "Just be dead again," you know, like, ugh. Really? No, he was decaying. His arm kept falling Ew. off. His skin was green and shit, you know. Ew! I watched Pet Cemetery one time. That that shit was messed up. I can't up. believe that you watched Pen Se Pet Cemetery, but you couldn't listen to Iron Man. We Man. weren't what supposed to watch Pet Cemetery. Yeah, but you we were, were talking about covering your ears and the other. But thing. that's because I was like a kid when that happened. I was like in, a teenager when we watched Pet Cemetery, and we had it all set up. We had the VHS players back then. We had two of them plugged into the same TV, so it was just well, we had one plugged in and then one that was right ready. And we had like some like normal show movie that we're allowed to watch, and then we were watching Pet Cemetery on the other one. So when my no mom knocked on the door, I was like, okay, I we had the whole plan. I'll get the door, and my sister would switch the thing out. So I'd be like, yeah, I'm coming, mom. She switched the thing. We'd be back there watching a whatever show. Oh, hey, mom, how's it going? Oh, you guys are watching this one again. Yeah. You're a wicked woman. Uh, yeah. Whoa, what a song. What a song. I, I see why everybody wanted us to do I know, the song now. yeah. They really, yeah, really wanted us Yeah, thanks for the... the song. Thanks for the suggestion for this, for sure. I hope people suggest more clutch songs, because I want to see if this guy can pull this off again. I know. I know that somebody said something about, like, mob grass, or... The mob goes wild. Mob goes wild and then space grass. Yeah. I, I combined them. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do you give it? Eight, eight and a half. This is a solid eight and a half for me. I already had the number. By the end of the song, I had the number. You solid. Did. Eight point five. Okay. Well. What did you give it? I said eight, eight and a half. So we'll go with eight and a half. So it's an eight and a half. <laughs> one of these days, we're gonna get these high fives right. What? That one was this. So that Get one was out. Sorry, out. Gone.